Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today in this lecture, we will discuss the steam power plant. Topics to be covered. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to learn working of different circuits in a steam power plant. See the layout of steam power plant we will discuss in the earlier lecture. Working of different circuits. The general layout of the thermal power plant consists of mainly four circuits. They are coal and ash circuit, air and flue gas circuit, feed water and steam flow circuit and finally cooling water circuit. We will discuss in detail one by one. By one. Coal and ash circuit. See the circuit diagram and they are working. See in this circuit the coal from the coal storage is fed to the boiler with the help of a coal handling equipment. After fedding the coal here into the boiler, there will be combustion will be done. What is the byproduct ash? Ash produced due to the combustion of the coal is removed to ash storage through the ash handling system. That's all about the coal and ash circuit. Next one is the air and gas circuit. See the circuit diagram and it's working. Now, here the air, see the air is atmosphere air. From the atmosphere, I have to suck air from the atmosphere. Then it is, generally in the atmosphere, a lot amount of dust will be presented there. So here you have to provide, incorporate one dust collector. You have to remove some amount of, uh, all the amount of dust with the help of the dust collector. Then it will be entering into the air preheater. Then it is, uh, from the air preheater, it is fed to the boiler. So when the air will be fed to the boiler, then there will be already coal will be placed here. Then there will be combustion will be done. Heat will be released. So this heat absorbed by the boiler water, then steam will be generated. That is a different thing. We already discussed about that. So the exhaust gases here after after combustion, there will be exhaust gases carrying sufficient quantity of heat and ash are passed through the superheater, economizer, air heater. See superheater already there is a steam will be there. That may be if it is a dry state steam or wet steam, the steam will be absorbed. The steam absorbs heat from the flue gases. The steam will be converted into superheated steam. The steam will be passed through the main wall. Then it will be expanding on the turbine. Power will be produced. Then these exhaust gases is passing through the economizer. I want to utilize some amount of heat. What will be there in the exhaust gases? Here there will be feed water will be there. The feed water water absorbs heat from the flue gases. Then uh, these flue gases are passing through the air preheater. So in the air preheater, already we are supplying air. We are taking from the air from the atmosphere. The air absorbs heat from the flue gases. The air will be get heated. That air will be fed to the boiler. Again the cycle will be continuous. See here. After uh, passing through the air, air preheater, the flue gases is uh, passing, through, uh, passing through the chimney. Finally, it is releasing to the atmosphere. Before it is releasing to the atmosphere, the flue gases uh, consist of some amount of uh, dust will be there or some amount of uh, ash particles also will be there in the flue gases. So that one I want to remove. So here a cyclone separator or a, a dust collector you have to place here. You have to remove the entire dust or ash particles, what will be there in the flue gases that you want to remove. Then it is entered into the chimney. Finally, it is released to the atmosphere. That's all for the air and gas circuit. Next one is the feed water and the steam flow circuit. Here, uh, what is the function of uh, boiler here? So first of all, uh, we will discuss about steam flow. So the boiler generates steam. So the steam will be passing through the superheater. Then it is, uh, and here the steam will be get uh, superheated. The superheated steam will be passing through the uh, main valve. Then it will be entering into the turbine, expanding on the turbine. Then the turbine will be rotated. There is short couple to the turbine, power will be generated. Then after expanding on the turbine, the steam will be exhaust steam, that is low pressure steam. Then it is uh, going through the condenser. Here the steam will be get uh, condensed into water droplets. Water into water. This is uh, regarding about the steam flow circuit. Next, what about the feed water? See, after condensation, the water will be here, the steam will be get condensed into water. The condens here the condensate will be 
extracting by with the help of a pump then it is going to the low pressure heater then it is a boiler feed pump passing through the boiler feed pump then it is going for the high pressure heater then it is going to the the feed water is going to the economizer finally the from the economizer the feed water that is uh, here the from the flue gases uh, heat will be absorbed by the water then uh, the hot water will be entering into the boiler here one more important point here so here uh, when the steam or water is passing through the different circuits there may be uh, some amount of loss will be there so how can we compensate that type of, that amount of loss so here i am showing uh, here this is a pond will be there here see this is a condenser from the condenser uh, the pump it takes the condensate and fed to the and fed to boiler so before it is fed to the boiler see there is a separate arrangement will be there here there is a pond will be there here from the pond i want to collect some amount of water with the help of pump pump circulates the water and it is fed to the feed water processing plant what is the function of feed water processing plant so why you have to why you have to do processing for the water because of the reason to reduce the dissolved salts to an acceptable acceptable level that is the thing what we are going to be do why we have to purify this water because this water forms scales inside the boiler that is a need that is a necessity will be there to purify the water before it is fed to the boiler that is the main thing here feed water processing this is the uh, way to add some amount of feed water to the boiler because there is a uh, there is a loss of water will be there because the steam or water is passing through the different components there a, 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 a amount of loss will be there so that uh, loss can be prevented with the help of this pond you have to add some amount of water before adding you want to do some feed water processing plant from that uh, you have to remove some uh, dissolved salts what will be there in the feed water so that's all about the particular circuit next one is the cooling water circuit see here there is a condenser will be there and here a cooling tower cooling water and there is a river generally for the condensation process we required a large amount of water we required that large amount of water either you can collect from the river or maybe pond or a, or, a, or maybe lake so generally most of the thermal power plant power plants will be located uh, nearer to the river or lakes see the what is the function of condenser here we already discussed it. the function of condenser is generally low pressure steam will come to the condenser here the steam will be get a condensation how it will be get condensation see the condensate will be see here from the condenser the condensate will be passing through it and uh, and it will be putting into the river uh, bottom of the river so again the new water will be collected with the help of a pump and the pump circulates the water to the condenser this is what we have to call it as a it is a open circuit because a lot amount of water will be available throughout the year the condenser uh, generally we have to fed to the river Fre uh, fresh water we are collected with the help of pump that will be feeding to the condenser so if uh, throughout the year the most um, more amount of water is uh, not available it means adequate water is not available then we can go for the cooling tower see here from the condenser is uh, collected from the condenser and it is uh, passing through passing through this line and see here this is entering into the cooling tower see here the steam low pressure steam will be it is a uh, see how it will be see here the water will be sprayed here the water will be sprayed so through through the spraying in the cooling tower there may be some loss of evaporation will be occurs due to this evaporation there may be some uh, water loss will be there that will be around 2 to 5 percent water loss will be there so how can we compensate that 2 to 5 percent of uh, loss of water so what we are what we are at that time what we are going to be do we when before it is we are feeding to the condenser you want to take some amount of water fresh water through the if it is river will be available we can collect water from the river or any other arrangements through pump through pumps or or tanks you have to add some amount of water to prevent the 2 to 5% of evaporation losses 
then finally so see here one is the this is one is the open circuit another one is the closed circuit which one is economical so here by observing this one if the amount of water will be throughout the year more amount of water will be available then open circuit is economical comparing with the closed circuit but if the throughout the throughout the year if a water is not available in the river or lake then we can go for the closed circuit this is with help of the cooling tower this is the closed circuit so finally the condensate will be get condensate that is with help of pump the condensate will be fed to the boiler so these are the sum of resources where i collected uh, this uh, entire data to prepare the video lecture that's all for today thank you very much